Before I start, let me say that I've asked for those statistics for years and have never gotten them from the governor either. I don't know what that means, but it's hard to get. Oh, thank you. I'm dropping stuff here. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, Mr. Superintendent, um, let me uh, say first of all that I was extremely disappointed uh, in the process being so lack in transparency in making these changes and amendments. Uh, I tried for several days to get a copy of any of the requested re changes that you've made, could not get any, could not get them online, could not get them in person, could not get them anywhere. And I will tell you that it is extremely alarming to me that you have made significant changes to people's charter applications, which I don't disagree with your right to do, but without letting the public in on what you were discussing, what issues were of importance to you, which matters were there, which items you were changing, how you were changing them, who, which board members participated. There was really no transparency, and I think that you all ought to take seriously that if you do not behave in a transparent measure when we have sunshine laws in this state, when we have laws that require you to be transparent, that all of your proceedings become questionable, and that's not something you want to ever be in a position of having people be able to say, well, I didn't know what they changed. I know that, for example, there were a lot of facilities issues. I was embarrassed by facilities issues coming up, uh, by charter people coming in saying that they didn't want to be responsible for asbestos removal. They didn't, that was in their original things. They had large lines of crossouts through the facilities. Now you've changed all that and I compliment you on doing that. But I think it's important to tell the public that they came here and asked you to eliminate all of those. Not every one of them, but many of them. Many of those charters asked you to relieve them of oversight by the inspector general in one way or another. Well, I'm sorry. The public should know that that was their request. You made some changes to that. That's fine, and I compliment you on that. But we didn't, it was very difficult to even find out what issues they were coming up with. They asked some of them to not have to do special education under the consent decree. Well, you didn't have a choice about that. You're under a consent decree. That's not like an optional item. But how is it that a charter would come here and say that they wanted to be let out of Special education issues. Now, you've corrected a lot of this. I don't know if you've corrected all of it, because I still have only just begun to read the 161 pages each application had of changes. I don't know how any of you read all of the changes before this meeting. And if you didn't read all of the changes before this, you voted on them this evening, I'm sorry to say I disagree with your view that you just take staff's view on that the changes were fine. I, I just think it's important to say to you that we have a 25-year-old charter school bill, passed 1992, 25 years old, did not anticipate in any way, shape, or form the charter management organizations. You do not know as a member of the public or as a member of the board what those charter management organizations do because they are not required to tell you. And yet, they decide a lot about what funding goes to each of the charters that they are managing. They decide a lot about what property they will buy or not buy. They decide a lot about all of these things. Thank you. I raise this in terms of the military school because this, and I support your decision to not support it, but because we had no way, I was, that was one I was particularly interested in because I did have in, involvement with, Mr. with the current governor who was then the mayor of Oakland when I was the chair of Assembly Ed as he was looking to have his, his military school funded. And, and without transparent information, it's very difficult to know. We also have some problems of charters applying for, new charters today, applying for one location. But when we find out where they actually ended up, wasn't the location they applied for. Don't they have to come back to you and say, well, we're not really going to be where we said we were? No, I guess they don't. We have a problem with uh, of uh, multi-year facilities. I think there's something in one of these uh, charters that now say that they can stay in a uh, multi-year in a Prop 39. State law doesn't allow multi-year. It only allows one year. Your legal counsel knows that it only allows one year. So why is it multi possible of multi-year in these, in these contracts? I don't know. 
Uh, I'm, I'm really mostly here to say to you that we have grave concerns. We have grave concerns. The public is growing in its concerns. And the concerns that they're growing in is, is that if you do not have a policy of do no harm, which I've stolen from the medical uh, industry, if you do not have a policy of do no harm, then if you continue to not ask the legislature to renew and look at the impact of endless numbers of charters on the students who are not in charters, if that is not a concern of yours, then I don't believe you need to be on this Board of Education. I mean that in, from the bottom of my heart. Your concern has to be what is the impact of 16% of the students being in charters on the financial ability of the 84% of the other children who are in your schools not having enough funding for them to have an adequate educational program. And I don't hear from you that you raise this issue all the time with Sacramento. I don't hear that from you. I heard Mr. Melvoin say, Board Member Melvoin, I apologize, Board Member Melvoin say today that yes, we should all be worried about how much money the schools get, we should get to be the number one. I would be happy if we just got to the national average at this point, but number one's a good goal. But if that doesn't happen, and it doesn't seem like it will, and you continue to permit without your raising with the legislature, the impact on 84% of the students by 16% of the students, if you do not raise that, if you do not continuously raise that, then you are abandoning the 84% of the students that you supposedly are looking out for. So I just wanted to say to you that this law needs to be re-looked at. Thank and you. I would hope that you would take leadership, all of you, in saying that we need to look at, if we're going to have charters, and I supported the legislation, so I'm not talking about, you know, this is this and this and that. If you don't say that we know, however, need to, after 25 years, to look at the impact on the kids not in charters, because there's been no charter school organization that said they want 100% of the kids. They have never said that in this state or any other state. So if they don't want 100% of the kids, then we have to make sure that public schools that are run by school districts have enough substantial support to be able to take care of the students who will never be in charters, and many of whom who never want to be in charters. So I, I thank you for your indulging me in this uh, repartee, but I wanted to say to you that board member day, it's former board member day. Too. Is it? All right. Uh, well, you know, I don't come too often, so I try not to, to be uh, in your way. I, I, I think it is really critical that we begin to see more leadership from this board, particularly in light of the fact that four of you have expensively attained your positions through charter school funding. I think it's particularly important for you four that got here that way to take leadership on this issue of renewing and looking at the 1992 plan because your voices will be heard in a way that others won't. And I'm not being facetious here. It will be heard in other ways that others won't. You have, in my opinion, the ultimate responsibility for those 84% of the kids that are thank not you. in charter schools. Uh, so I thank you very much, and I approve that you're taking care of this military one. I also thank you about the International Language School, which I spoke to you about last time. Not because I don't like dual immersion, my grandkids were in dual immersion, but because if you place it in a location where it's gonna take away kids from your existing schools with dual immersion, then they end up not having enough students to do dual immersion. Thank you very much.